brand manipulation. Banks in South Africa are facing charges for manipulating the rand. Tatu is angry that domestic and foreign banks manipulated the rand's value between 2007 and 2018. At once, those involved charged and prosecuted. The Competition Commission is pursuing legal action against 28 South African and international banks accused of colluding to manipulate the rand and versus the dollar. Now, this happened in 2007 and in 2008. Now, the implications of this is that these banks generated trillion rand a day during this period. That's how much they made, one trillion. Now, five banks have admitted to their involvement. Standard Chartered has agreed to pay a penalty of 42.7 million. The Competition Commission is seeking accountability from banks. APSA, Standard Bank, Net Bank, First Rand, Investec, Barclays, and others for the impact on the various aspects of our country's economy. Now, this is a heavy topic, very heavy topic. If you look at it, they were basically influencing the USD czar currency pair by fixing the offers on the bid offer spreads and the spot exchange rate. Now, I want to explain this in a way that everybody will understand it. Think about cell phones. If people are selling cell phones together and what they do is they decide to call one another and say, let's all change the price of all our cell phones to the same price. You wake up the next morning, a Samsung is 50,000 Rand. An iPhone is 50,000 Rand. A Huawei is 50,000 Rand. Any cell phone is 50,000 Rand. The consumers are forced to pay for any cell phone at 50,000 Rand. That's what they did. They influenced the Rand to be a certain rate and forced anybody who was doing international business. If you were buying something overseas, you had to change your rands to dollars. And basically you were changing them at that rate that they all agreed on. These guys were called the Forex cartel. These guys were literally influencing the rand to be a certain rate. And everybody who did business, including me and you, when you paid for your Spotify account, which is an international company, when you paid for your Apple Music, when you paid for your YouTube, you were also affected because the rand value was actually manipulated. So every single South African, we had funds stolen from us due to this manipulation. I know. Maybe you were thinking it didn't affect you. Yes, it did. When you paid for your Netflix. Yes, that rate you pay, it was wrong. They took your money from it. What that meant, if you trickle it down, it means that when the price of bread in our country, the price of fuel, the price of diesel, the price of petrol, all of it was all a lie. All of it. They were just working on their balance sheets, making each other richer goods and services in our country that we were paying for. We were all paying the wrong amount. How do we even fix this? How do we ensure that this happens? How do we rectify this? Where a group of banks in our own country were screwing the whole country. Everything we paid for, inflated prices. Standard Chartered is one of the few banks to have admitted a liability for its role in what the Competition Commission called a currency manipulation cartel. It was fined 42.7 million rand, or about 2.3 million US dollars. It also agreed to help the Competition Commission with its ongoing proceedings against other alleged participants in the case. The Commission welcomed Standard Chartered's decision and is encouraging the more than two dozen other banks accused to do the same. Now, I don't want another situation where these banks come out and pay 100 million, even 200 million, when they were making a trillion rand per day. Now, this banking issue is not only starting now in our country. For the longest of time, since the dawn of democracy, the banks have only been owned by a certain amount of people. Any other bank that tries to open in our nation fails. Now, some of these banks have already paid fines of $40 million in the US. That's about $536 million that they've paid to the US. In South Africa, 
our competition tribunal is only starting now. We're only catching up on this now. This happened in 2007. We're in 2024. 2023, we're only finding out about this. Now, I want us to look at the structure of our economy because that's where the problem is. Any bank that tries to open in our nation is shut down or brought down. Only the big banks only survive. Now, what this means is we need to reform our banks in South Africa. We need young people that will open up new banks that will serve the people and that will be honest. If it was not for a whistleblower that decided to risk his life and go against the banks and tell us the truth of what they'd be doing, they would still be continuing today. We have a group of rotten people that run our financial system in our country. And it becomes important for us to note that for many years, they've been banking or they've been closing off anybody else from participating in banks. It's only in South Africa where you only have four or five banks. Everywhere else in the world, there's over a hundred banks that people have options to. In South Africa, only four or five banks. Why? Arai South Africa will seek to change the rot and corruption that's going on in our banks. We seek to make the banking system a more transparent system through technologies like blockchain technology. We seek to introduce new banks. Banks that will be owned by young actual scientists that are studying. Young black women that aspire to own banks in our nation should be able to own banks. Young black men that aspire to own banks should be able to own banks. Banks that will fund our revolution. Banks that will fund young people's businesses. Banks that will be aligned to helping the citizens of our country. We will change the financial system in our country to ensure that banks are no longer manipulating our people. And this starts by us voting correctly. These banks didn't do it alone. They have political parties that they are working with that continue to bankroll them, that they work together with to let our people suffer. We need honest people in the realm of the financial sphere in our nation. Honest and trustworthy people. And that is why we are aligning for 2024 to say it is our 1994. We must vote for the right government in order for us to change this, to take out the rot in manipulating our whole nation, to be losing trillions per day because of wicked people that are at the helm. Let us ensure that we are registered to vote and we vote wisely. Vote Arise South Africa.